Jannah is so easy. Just by doing this act, all the eight gates of Jannah will be opened for you. Some people might say that I don't pray. It's just because I find it very difficult for me to pray. It's too heavy, it's too difficult. Well, I'll give you a very simple example. Remember that night when you tried to go to sleep and you found it very difficult to go to sleep? What did you do? You started to strive and to struggle to be able to go to sleep. You closed the door, you turned off the lights, you did everything, you chose the nice pillow, you laid down in the best position, you did everything possible. Why? To be able to go to sleep. You strove just to be able to go to sleep. What about striving to gain Jannah and to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Some people will say, I don't pray because those people who pray, they are the ones who steal, they are all liars, they are this, they are that. Didn't you see that Allah Azza wa Jal gave us an opposite description? Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar that truly prayer prevents people from indecencies and from evil deeds. And let's suppose that some of the people or many of the people who pray, they do bad things. Well, you should become the one who pray and treat people well and doesn't steal from people. Some people, when you ask them, why don't you pray? They would say, I have a good heart and I do not harm anybody. Then why? Should I pray? I'll tell you, Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one who truly knows what is in your heart. Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one who knows whether you have a good heart or not. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that whoever leaves this salah is a disbeliever. Then how could you claim that you still have a good heart? It is impossible. We have a statement from you and a statement from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going to believe the Prophet If you had good iman, you would have prayed. Do you know why? Because salah, Allah Azza wa calls it in the Quran, iman. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ That Allah Azza wa wouldn't have caused your iman, meaning your salah, to be lost. Some people might say, well, I have a good heart and I do good things and I don't harm other people. So maybe salah is not important for me now. Well, if you say that salah is not important for you now, it's as if you are accusing Allah Azza wa Jal of not knowing what is important. If it wasn't important, Allah Azza wa Jal wouldn't have mentioned it in the Quran about 700 times. Let's suppose that your boss asked you to do something. Put this thing over there, for example. And then he comes after some time and you didn't do anything. And he asks you, why didn't you do what I asked you to do? You tell him, well, it, maybe it's not important. Wouldn't he get mad at you? He will get mad at you. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Some people say that we don't pray because we have so, so many sins. Inshallah, I'm going to repent one day and then I'm going to start praying five times a day. But now, I'm still not very clean. I don't deserve to stand in lines with these Muslims. I have so many sins. Inshallah, I'll repent first. Didn't you know that there was a woman during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? She used to steal from people. So they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about her. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that her prayer is eventually going to stop her from, from stealing. So pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Do these salawat, even if you do other sins. Even if you were last night, if you were in a nightclub, don't come to yourself and say, oh, it's Fajr time. Well, I've spent all night in disobedience. Why should I pray now? No, pray. And inshallah, through this prayer, you're going to achieve repentance. And you're going to stop whatever sins you are committing. Some people would say we don't pray because Allah Azza wa Jal is the most forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. This is why I don't pray. I'm hoping for Allah's mercy. You know what some of the scholars of Islam said? They said that hoping for the mercy of the one that you do not obey 
is a type of foolishness. Allah Azza wa Jal tells you in the Quran clearly, ibadi anni ana al rahim Tell my servants that I am the most forgiving and I am the most merciful. In the same ayah, you know what Allah Azza wa Jal says? وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ And that my punishment is the most severe punishment. In just in the same exact line, Allah Azza wa Jalla describes Himself with both. Hope for Allah's mercy, but do well. And Allah Azza wa Jalla will forgive you and have mercy on you. The last type of people that I would like to mention here, the type of people whom when you ask them, why don't you pray, they would say, well, I prayed. And I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for so many things. I asked Allah for many things, but Allah never gave them to me. And for these kind of people who would say, didn't you know that Allah Azza wa is the one who knows what is best for you? You might have asked Allah Azza wa for a car, and Allah Azza wa didn't chose not to give it to you. You know why? Maybe because if He gave you that car, you could have gotten into a car accident and you became paralyzed. And Allah Azza wa didn't want to do that to you. And this goes with every single thing. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah azza wa jal. Why do we pray? The meaning, the basic meaning of the word salah in Arabic, salah means connection. Connection. To have a sila, to have a connection with someone. For a person who says that I believe that there is a creator, I believe that there is Allah. I believe that there is someone who created this universe. The first question that you could ask this person, do you have any connection with this creator? Do you have any connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you have any sila with Allah? Do you pray the five daily prayers to Allah azza wa jalla? Salah is called the mother of the acts of worship. Why is that? Because in Salah, you use all of your limbs. And Salah resembles so many other acts of worship. For example, in Hajj, you face the Qibla. And in Salah, you face the Qibla. You face towards Mecca. In fasting, you don't eat and drink. And in Salah, you do not eat and drink. In Jihad, people struggle and fight for the sake of Allah Azza wa And in Salah, they struggle against their own selves. In Salah, you use your mind in reflection, reflecting, and in thinking about the verses that are being recited. And you use your heart in having khushu'a and humbleness before Allah. This is why when the Prophet ﷺ would bow to Allah Azza wa he would say, خَشَعَ لَكَ سَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي My hearing is humbled before you. My eyes are humbled before you. خَشَعَ لَكَ سَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي وَمُخِّي وَعَظْمِي My mind and my bones, everything in me is humbled before Allah Azza wa Did you know that when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa turns towards you with His face subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He will turn away from you only when you turn away from Him in the salah. Did you have this feeling in your prayer when you prayed to Allah Azza wa didn't you know that those people who pray, you can always tell from their faces, from the light which Allah Azza wa has put in their faces, because they, they talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah Azza wa gave them from His light? And I have another question for you. If I tell you that tonight you're invited to the house of, let's say, Michael Jordan, many young people will be so happy. If I tell them you can tell him whatever you want, and you can ask him whatever questions you want, he will be so happy. If you tell some other people that tonight you are invited to the house of Bill Gates, ask him whatever you want, and he will give it to you. Talk to him. Be happy, enjoy that visit. If you were able to have that visit and you see the people around you saying, okay, it's time to leave, you might be saying, no, 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 let's, let's, let's enjoy this visit, let's stay more. What if you are in the time of the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet of Allah invited you to his house? Wouldn't you be honored with that invitation? 